how's it going everybody this is kevin from audio digital today i'm going to talk about sample rate does sample rate matter sample rate in digital audio is the number of times per second an audio signals amplitude is recorded the more times every second the amplitude is recorded the more accurately represented the sound this is similar to how a higher number of megapixels in your digital camera and give you a more detailed picture. However, our human ears can only pick up so many details, and human ears are more often than not the audience for any given digital recording. So what sample rate should you use? CDs are recorded at 44,100 samples per second. This is because you have to sample at twice the rate of the highest frequency that you want to capture, and human hearing tops out at 22,000 hertz, even for the best of us. So 44.1K should have us covered. So is there ever any reason to sample any higher than 44.1K? Let's see what happens when we record a high frequency sine wave at two different sample rates. On the top, we're going to record at 44.1 kilohertz and at the bottom at 88.2 kilohertz, twice the top sample rate. And both will be 16 bits. Now we'll generate a sine wave in each at 20,000 hertz. As we zoom into the 44K file, we can see that the amplitude goes up and down in waves. This is a result of the distortion that comes from the limited resolution 44K can provide. Now let's take a look at the 88K file. We can see that the amplitude fluctuations are gone. This file looks much closer to the sine wave that we were expecting to see. Now let's take a listen to these files. They're kind of hard to hear because of their high frequency. So let's pitch them down by a factor of four. This will allow us to easily hear any distortion that the files contain. Pitching these waveforms down will also give us a better idea of what they might look like when they're converted into an analog signal. You can hear that the 88K file sounds a lot closer to a pure sine wave than the 44.1K file. And here is a sample of a pure sine wave at the same frequency for comparison. So what does this all mean for your recording? Well, the distortion that happens at 44K happens at high frequencies, at frequencies that some people can't hear very well at all. The results of using higher sample rates can be very obvious to some and almost indistinguishable to others. It's important to think of your audience. If your audience is going to be listening to your material in a highly compressed format like MP3, on a mobile device listening through stock earbuds, 88K will mostly be a waste of your computer resources. Keep in mind that most devices that people will hear your productions on can only produce a sample rate up to 48K. Using these higher sample rates effectively doubles your CPU load and the hard drive space that your files take up. However, there is a rule of thumb that says that the better the sound quality you start out with, the better the end result. With that said, if your computer can handle the extra load and you have the hard drive space, then go ahead and record at 88 or 96K. Things are a little different if you're doing audio for film. The equipment in commercial theaters and home theaters are capable of reproducing these higher sample rate frequencies. And the difference between using a lower sample rate and a higher sample rate is noticeable. So in these instances, it is much more important to use 96K or above. So bottom line, if your audience has high-end equipment, use 96 or above. If your audience is mostly going to be listening to your material on an iPhone, then 44 or 48 will be fine. One more thing I'll talk about is oversampling. Is there any reason to oversample 
your existing files and change them from 44k to 88k or something of the like well no there's not the information that is in that file is as good as it's ever going to get oversampling won't improve the quality of the file whatsoever oversampling within software synthesizers can improve sound quality however because those sounds are being generated according to algorithms and using oversampling can give you a better, more accurate representation of the waveforms you're trying to create. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if this video was helpful to you, be sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day.